Welcome, this is Rob Chisholm and I'm going to talk you through Thermalin. If you notice I'm looking out the front, this is myself in the picture here, and I'm looking for the rising air and now I've decided, I believe in my heart, there is rising air out there. There's no actual bird or sign, normally I'd look for some swifts in the summer catching some flies on the rising air, but it's not there, but I sense there's air there. I, I'm so... Um, 100% sure <laughs> I'm gonna go for it so my options are head out the front there's no wind on this particular day it's very light wind so I, I prefer light winds on a paraglider because the paraglider is relatively slow so I can cover the ground that means I can get to where I think the rising air most probably is so you can see people here bunched up gliders they're walking up the slope it is one of those days shadows are long we're in the month of October so I've come up with a view to have a little bit of a ridge soaring sort of flight but I think there's more opportunities to be had so I'm pushing out and the time there is about midday and notice those shadows are very long so on the trees there now as I push out I've got an option here I'm not able to come and glide really back to the ridge there's no ridge lift because there's no wind remember so when I go out I've also got to think could I land at the bottom safely I'm putting that thought to the back of my mind and concentrating on the rising air so I've got to go to this rising air and it's only about here I sense and if, you, if you're watching the video you will notice I actually push down with my leg in a moment so I sense it's there and I push down with that right leg so I'm not breaking much I'm just and now I go yep the very goes beep is not a particularly big thermal if you look at the ground speed I pick up because I'm going with the wind I complete the 360 back into wind or, or where I started from so I haven't drifted back very much if the winds were stronger I, I wouldn't be doing 360 this low to the, the the tree area because I may well be just thrown back into the hill with the rising air and the wind strength so the, these conditions are to me similar to what I fly in Nepal or I fly in the French Alps the, the air is going straight up and I, I like that particular type of condition for me uh, I'm well suited for it I don't really like flying in 15 20 mile an hour ridge lift winds uh, trying to catch a thermal that goes over the back of the hill at 30 or 40 so we're, we're approximately 200 feet we'll say above the actual ground down there and remember this is the month of October if this was sort of April to September the thermal would be a lot stronger at midday that is so you can see I, I gain a bit of altitude and three or four turns here quite quickly uh, there's nobody coming into my airspace which I love being away from the hill means I can 360 get up there then people take off so yeah I've taken a brave move gone out the front could have missed it by 30 seconds and landed and gone oh dear so I've taken the one thermal right hand 360 rule applies at Devil's Dyke if safe to do so and I'm quite happily in this thermal but it is small for me we're going up incredibly slowly for a viewer who's never watched a thermal before they may be thinking wow you know you've gone up quite quick uh, well it's not quick enough for me but I don't have to work very hard I don't have to think because I'm going up relatively slowly I don't have to think well somebody's going to come rising up underneath me very quickly or I'm going to rise up in front of anyone else now that's the end of that thermal going up it's gone well, that's what's going through my mind I've, I've not been in the center I need to find it again I know it's still there because the winds are light and the thermal is relatively small but it's drifting up so I know if I get in there so I'll go a bit quicker now I'm going to just feel where it is I'm exploring the area and remember because the winds are light the thermal won't drift over the back so quickly so I have more time to actually find that thermal go and find it if I lose it or it gets a bit weak you know I can make decisions I'm not having to rush so I've got all the time to relax here and just concentrate and catch in the thermal so now I'm back in that little bit of wafty air 
and just rising very steadily. The takeoff area down below that's um, Devil's Diet in the car park. And the black area over the back, by the way, that's the V going behind. It's a V shape of valley. And if you were to go down there when the winds are stronger and can't fly back over the pub, you'd be in what's called rotor. No aircraft lights rotor, so we, we won't be worrying about that today. But you see on the left now, it's very dark. It's uh, the V at the back of Devil's Dyke. You don't wish to be flying over that area low. So at the moment, I'm concentrating more about gaining altitude. So I'm just going around and around in circles. I would most probably be looking around more, uh, whereas the camera obviously is positioned, so it's looking down to give you, the viewer, the best idea of what it's like looking down. But obviously I'm not looking at the ground all the time when I'm flying. I look for errors or signals of lift. Uh, it might be some birds or crows taking off and thermaling. Now, I've gone over the back of the pub. I do need to be sure I can come back, or I could have continued going with the thermal and then go for an XC or cross country. But I have a plan. My plan is to get as much height as I can, go out to a cloud that's building out the front, and then fly down to Stenin, where Dave Thompson is doing a school inspection on air sports, and drop in and get a cup of coffee and lift back to Devil's Dyke. Or that, that's my route today, that's what I'm planning. So known as the glider below doing uh, 360 on the orange glider going right. We all turn right, it's a general rule. And that way we keep it safe. If we all turn the right way, it does help. When you leave the site, obviously you can turn left, etc. So now I'm just moving forwards. It's this time when you're doing this, you may come into rising air again. You may not, you may hit sinking air. If you're in sinking air and it's safe to do so, you can always put a lot of speed on or touch the speed bar. It all depends on the wind strength, the strength of the thermal, etc. But now what, what I'm doing is I'm moving forwards with heights to find my next thermal. Now, as I'm up here, there's not much more going on. You see, I just got buffeted around there. I've got a lot of time to work out where to go and what to do. So there's my thermal. I know it's there. So I just go around and take it. If there was a lot of people with me, I wouldn't have room to explore like this. So it's either find a flying site with nobody on, or get up there first, I guess, is the idea. But once you're up there, you've got all the time to think about your next thermal. You can also see the other paragliders below, and when they get into a thermal, you can be sure there's a thermal there coming towards you. So it helps if you keep an eye on the other gliders. What you know, some might go up very quick, some might go down. If they're going down, obviously that's a sinking air mass, and you can start to work out where the rising air is. Now, there's clouds up today, that's what's helping to generate more lift, so when you get to a certain altitude, you can actually climb a bit more and stand underneath the cloud, and the cloud will keep you there. But if you're floating near the bottom of the ridge, you won't get up to this altitude now unless you can get a thermal. The thermal will take you there. And that, that's the hardest thing for people to understand is where and when will that thermal come? Well, they don't come like British Rail, or maybe they do, they come late or they come soon, I don't know. But they come when there's a temperature difference. So today's a cool day in October and the temperature difference is quite nice. We've got some hot sun and it is towards the end of October, it's the 20th of October. It's not normal to be climbing in England in thermals to this altitude, but it's one of those days. It only lasted for a couple of hours and now what I'm doing, I've gained enough altitude for myself, I'm quite happy. I'm going to push out the front and you can see this is the part I hate about paragliding. They are so slow. We're not moving quick enough. Uh, the glider I'm flying, by the way, is a 10-year-old design, a Dell Oasis, or Gin Oasis, I think they call it. It's time for me to upgrade and get a new glider with some more speed, but uh, generally paragliders are slow. Um, that's why maybe you can pack it in your bag and put it on your back and walk off. So there's always trade-offs but at the moment I really want to go fast and I'm not going fast enough to basically cross this gap 
go out the front and get under the cloud so th that's where I'm going next and I'm going to put that into the next part of the video so the video which will follow this will f show you the next part of the flight I did but this part I will go back rewind through it if you're a low air time get used to understanding how to 360 we'll come on a tandem with Rob Chisholm and I'll take you up there myself so keep it happy keep it flying and be safe that's all for now